Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. We have, we have started talking about uh, uh, just to quick brief, right? Basically, last week we started and then we uh, we talked. I started talking about the products, how we are going to configure the products in terms of structure wise, where we talked about. Uh, bundle products, uh, standalone products, multi-level bundle, then we talked about uh, like a hybrid products which we can, you know, um, sell as a part of uh, <clears throat> standalone or as a part of option. Then we talked about um, um, how we are going to create a one-time product versus subscription-based products and um, there we talked about like a fixed pricing if it's a subscription based uh, for a given month or for a given year or if it is in a dynamically um, if i have to derive the price right uh, for the part or for the entire I means within the product right uh, so all three things we we all discussed and say that tomorrow we'll continue this so so POD right that we discussed uh, last class so that we discussed for the subscription based products now the question is like if I have a one time products right which is uh, the similar kind of pricing behavior is how I will do that so for an example let's say in real time let's say installation fee so you I have uh, I mean I purchased something now I required installation for that right so definitely uh, the same uh, principle goes there right so if you are let's say in our day-to-day -day life of course right let's say if you are planning to buy an AC or a, let's say simple TV set right so the TV set installation charge might be very uh, less as compared to installation of AC charge right so there also I want to um, control the pricing behavior based on the parent product but since this is installation charge definitely you can't uh, come and charge every month or every year right that this is installation fee so let's see for the one-time products if you want to do the POT the rest of the behavior will be the same but uh, only the difference is that uh, uh, pricing you are not going to do it in a recurring manner and uh, the pricing is not going to depend upon the tenure or the term of the quote. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go and create. So I'm going to create one more new product which we will call this as a let's say installation fee. And I'm going to put under the miscellaneous. So this time, I will not populate this field because that we discussed, right? That the moment I will populate this field, this product becomes the subscription based product. So where I will tell the system that, hey, this is not the normal list price, it's a dynamically. So that value is also available, guys, here in this uh, field called pricing method. Okay. And in this pricing method, uh, we, we have bunch of values we will see one by one. Uh, but the very first thing, uh, here you can see the percent of total. So all you have to do is that go and select that percent of total. Now, the moment you select that, so definitely where you will go and provide the percent. So rest of the fields values are going to some uh, same, right? So here I will, let's just say that 5% will be my installation charge. So I will come here. If you have to put any constraints, you can put all those things. Only difference here is instead of selecting subscription pricing as percent of total here in the pricing method field, I am selecting the percent of total. Okay. So that is the only difference. Now let me show you, right? So let's have some, of course, here also the same principle or funda will go that um, if you want to put a mean constraint max constraint then put that price if you do not have any such constraint i can go with a zero dollar also in the price book because of course the price is going to be decided as per the product in the cart right 
So I'm just attaching to the currency. Now let's see this on the code, right? Uh, so I will pick it, pick up a code where we have duration because I just wanted to show you that it is not going to affect in terms of the tenure or the term of this product. So this code is still of 12 months. Uh, the 4th, 15th uh, is the start date and the end date is 4 14, 2022. Now if I will go and click edit lines, So let me just select a random this product and then I am selecting this installation fee or any other product right so if I will do that selection so if you see um, $10,000 and then $5,000 and if you do the 5% calculation you will get that 5 to 5 zero and that's what there is in the net total also right there is no multiplying with 12 or any tenure as such it's just that the one time installation fee and it is taking that five percent of the product so that is how if you if your requirement is to do the dynamic pricing for one time product uh, you should go with uh, the pricing price type field which is of percent of total okay now it has uh, uh, two more values right if you can see that these are the Okay, before going there, right, by default, if you see any product, if you are creating, right, by default, earlier we never um, put that much emphasis on that particular field, but whenever you are clicking new, right, let me show you, so that by default value is list. So let me show you, so let's say I'm creating a product and uh, if you see the by default value of the pricing method is list. So what this list is doing actually? So see, uh, this field, uh, pricing method, right, it is deciding uh, for all one-time products that, uh, hey, how your list price is going to derive, right, and what would be your source of truth for your list price. So in this, uh, what happens whenever you are creating a product for the first time, Salesforce CPQ is populating the pricing method as list. So what this list is doing, it is simply saying that go and see the price in the price book entry and that price is your list price of your product and that is why by default right till the time we saw uh, this um, uh, PUT before that whenever I am creating any any product right and whatever the price that I have added in the in the cart that is going to define my list price right so that is the reason uh, you guys are seeing whatever the price I am putting in the price book entry, right? That is the reflecting here in the list price. And the reason is because the by default pricing method is list and I never touched about it, never found about it. The moment uh, I change from list to POT, so you can see that now again, uh, the source for deriving the list price is changed now. It's no more of the price book entry, rather it's a dynamic pricing, right? That we discussed in this last class. So today we'll discuss about the remaining two, which are again the important concept of the pricing. So first we will talk about this pricing method, which is called block pricing. Now block is very, very uh, CPQ, Salesforce CPQ, I will rather say the terminology. But let's first talk about what is the block pricing in actual world or in the business scenario. So if I will make you guys understand, right, it's a one-liner uh, uh, definition first, right? It's a fixed range pricing. When I'm saying fixed range, right? So what does that mean is for a given range, let's say uh, from quantity one to hundred, your price is fixed or next range, so I will say that, okay, from one to 10 quantity, I will charge you $100. No matter whatever you will use between one to 10, I will charge $100. The next tier will be like, okay, from 20 to uh, 30 quantity, I will charge $200, no matter what quantity you are going to use within this range. 
So that kind of pricing is basically in the Salesforce CPG is called as a block pricing. Now let me give you a simple example in our again day today life. So uh, let's say when you are um, uh, when you are uh, going and subscribing for Netflix, right? Let's take that example. So in the Netflix, if you see, there are three types of plans, right? Uh, which is like a basic plan, then um, like a premium or ultimate plan. Now, what's the uh, basic difference between these three plans? These three plans is not stopping you the content. Of course, the quality of the content, like, okay, uh, uh, in ultimate, you will see mostly in HD and all. But what is the major constraints there? So if you closely watch their plan, what they are saying that is in basic, we are just giving you one screen, which means at a given point of time, only one user can watch any content. If moment the other user is trying to watch any content at this point of time, that user will get an error that too many screens or something like that. Hey guys, did he just cut off? Yep, looks like I'm not able to hear him. Okay. Hey, sorry, I think uh, in between uh, I lost the audio. <laughs> So sorry, so what I was talking about that Netflix plan, right, to make you guys understand what is uh, what kind of fixed pricing uh, looks like. So in Netflix plan, as I said, like there are three types of uh, plans in India, at least you can see that that in the first basic plan, there will be only one screen. In the second plan, they will give you the two screens. And in the ultimate and the final one top level plan, they have the given you the four four screens. So what's it, what Netflix is saying that, okay, within one to four, now no matter, um, you know, one user is watching at a time, two users is watching, all four are watching at a time, Netflix is not given, uh, you know, really bothered about it, right? They have given the, those number of screen licenses to you. And if you are using it, not using it, you have to pay that free subscription fee if you are going with that plan, right? So here if you see that kind of the same price type of pricing what Netflix did, they have given you the range between 1 to 4 or even 0 to 4, right? Even if you are not watching entire month, they are not bothered about it, right? They are not going to charge you based on what content or how many movies or series you are watching. It simply it will be based on the number of days and in that they have given you those number of uh, screen licenses. So typically this type of pricing guys, you will see it in the software industry. So another example of software industries is, let's say many companies, right? Uh, different, uh, you can say, let's say uh, most of the IT companies, they have a, uh, on a daily basis, number of employees are coming and number of employees are, you know, leaving the firm also. Now, whatever employees are coming, they need Windows licenses, right? They have to give the laptop to work. So do you think really that every day uh, any company is going in front of Microsoft and saying that, hey, uh, can you give me the quotation of 10 new window licenses? I have to go you know, and give me the quotation and then I will procure that because 10 new employees are coming and joining me. No, right? It's not practically possible even. So these types of, com I mean, mostly these companies, what they are going to deal with Microsoft, that Microsoft has given them the lot, like, okay, from this to this license. So in this unlimited package, you have to pay this much of price and Microsoft has given, let's say, 10,000, 20,000 licenses for a year or two year, whatever based on the uh, tenure your uh, company is going with. Now, Microsoft is really not care about it, right? In that 20,000, you use 5,000, 2,000, it's up to you. The whole lot licenses is allocated to you. Within that, let's assign the user, remove the user. It's all there. Your IT team or your company's IT team will manage that. Right. So these types of uh, pricing, mostly as I said, you will see it in the uh, uh, 
uh, in the um, uh, software industry uh, like another example for example antivirus also so you can see that some nowadays antivirus companies are offering that four four different machine you can have activated this um, antivirus like four different laptop now that package is there now if you use you into two laptop one laptop all four laptop they will charge the same price right so that is what in salesforce cpq that specific terminology is called the block pricing where we will define the range and that then for that particular range we will define the price okay and in that particular range whatever quantity i will put it will not matter the price will be fixed thus the quantity will decide which tier pricing is going to apply so since we are talking about netflix and all right so let's create a product called netflix okay and i am going to put for an example under the software family and here i am just putting the product code in random making this as an active and this time what i am going to do is i am just changing the pricing method from list to block okay now next immediate question is again here also do i need price book yes you need price book what it will do right now it will do nothing but all we need it because of uh, all we know right the prerequisite without that my product is not available in the cart so definitely i have to go and uh, put any random price or zero dollar price whatever you want but i need one entry so i am going to put that entry so for now i am just putting a zero dollar random okay and i'm attaching to this currency so actual blog if you see this guys this is a related list um under the product so this is the place where you will go and define the block pricing okay so uh, this is the first time we are you know going to define the pricing other than the price book entry okay so now here you have this uh, button called edit all uh, it will just open one interface and i can go and define the tiers more than one tiers in a single screen so first of all here you have the price book so uh, first suggestion is guys just first attach it with a price book so that's the question right if i have more than different currency and each currency have a different pricing right how i will manage that so this is the place why i am saying the very first time do that because moment you will do this uh, there will be a, a refresh of the page and the data so you will lose that if you will do the later so first let's select your price book under which you want to uh, you know associate this pricing now here you have uh, four different fields available and very important thing guys because um, you will get a big amount of question and this concept we are going to use exactly in when we will talk about volume based discounting term based discounting all and all right so this concept is going to be the same everywhere and we have to understand this and here i will tell you what type of questions also will be asked so first field is the name field so name field is just like because behind the scene each entry will create one record in the block pricing object okay so if you have to uh, you know migrate the data from uh, lower environment to higher environment you do not have to come and open this screen and start adding it manually you don't have to right all you have to just do the load the data on the block pricing object itself but salesforce cpq is given this you because for the first time as an admin if you are doing that so you can do everything on a single screen rather than going and creating one record one by one right so this name is like as i said is a normal name field uh, for creating any object and of course because it's a name field it's a mandatory uh but we will use it for certain purpose okay i will come to that later now what is this lower bound and upper bound as it is very significant it look like like okay um, because i am talking about the range so definitely here i have to put the lower range versus here i have to put the upper upper range and then whatever the price it is right but why i am saying that here there is something uh, that is different and you have to learn 
So let me open the Excel sheet, right? And first we will talk about what client is giving you the requirement and then we'll see that how I will translate this, okay? But one sec. So let's say uh, uh, my client has given this requirement that Netflix, right? So here I am saying for an example, from one to 10 quantity, right? I will charge, let's say hundred dollars. And they are saying from 11 to 20 quantity, they will charge $200. And from 21 plus, let's say, uh, whatever quantity you will put, that's an unlimited package. And they have given a very big number for an example, let's say they will charge $4,000. So client will give you these types of requirement. Now, let me write it. This is the lower bond. Now I will try to translate this into our the CPQ, right? So this is the lower bond and this is the upper bond. Now when I will go and load this data or create this data as it is in Salesforce CPQ, Salesforce CPQ will start throwing the error. I mean, you will not able to save this data as it is right now. Why? So let's talk about it, how Salesforce will take this. So first limitation guys in, in Salesforce, uh, in terms of when, wherever you are defining the tiers, it's not within the block pricing, wherever. So first limitation says that the, the lower bond of the next tier should be equal to the upper bond of the immediate tiers. So for an example, in this case, as per the Salesforce definition, this lower bond should be 10 or you make the upper bond equals to 11, either one of it. So let me show you, right? So for an example here, I will put, let's say lower bond one, upper bond. So for an example, since we are talking about 10, I am putting this, let's say $100, right? And let's put this name. And if I will try, just I click plus sign, right? I will try to put 11, 20, and let's say $200 and I'm trying to save. So see this error. What it is saying that the lower bond of block two, which means the second row is talking about, must be equal to the upper bond of the previous block. So that is the first lesson you guys have to remember that when client has given you this type of data, you have to first translate it into uh, the Salesforce way. So if I have to translate is now I have a doubt, right? The question is that what I will do because client is saying till 10 quantity, they want to charge 100. So if I will put like this one to 10, then here I have to put 10 to 20, right? And I will put this data now Salesforce will be able to save the save this data. Now the question is uh, if I will put it like that, the main question when and even sometimes interviewer will give you this kind of uh, or even in your exam you will get uh, this kind of uh, situation. The question they will exactly ask what will be the price if I will put a quantity equals to 10 in the cart. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.